Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Today a very special episode since a lot of new beginning music interested people are joining the channel. I wanted to make a video about which DAW, which music making program actually to choose, which one is the most beginner friendly, which one fits the best to you. There are a lot of alternatives available. It's very confusing, a lot of different prices and versions. I'll try and make it as clear as possible so you make the right choice. So if you want to get started with music production, the first thing, the first choice, the most important before you buy any hardware equipment is actually the software. And among all of the software, the most important is your DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. I'm for example using here Logic. It's basically a shell for all of the plugins to go into and be used, synthesizers, EQs, compressors, like everything. There are tons of additional plugins that work within these DAWs. A lot of DAWs come already with plugins. A lot of them, or actually almost all of them, straight out of the box, you can use them to produce a full hit, no problem. And before comparing all of them, let me tell you, that it's not about which DAW you use. Yes, some of them are better for some certain styles, but every DAW is capable of making every type of music. Anyone that says anything else is just stupid. It's not about what you use. It's more about the skills, the experience, and just doing this for a bunch of years and not about which program you use. There are still differences, and I'd love to clarify all of them and give you a hint, an advice, a direction, which one might be the best for you. I'm already producing for eight years. I started with Reason actually for the first month. It was too annoying for me and fiddly. Switched to Logic, then had like half a year where I tried out Ableton, went back to Logic, and I'm ever since working with Logic. I personally like it the most, but that's probably just due to me being very used to it. Whenever you choose a DAW at the beginning, you usually stick to it or maybe switch once, but there is not a, like, a, like a point in switching between DAWs. You learn one, get comfortable with it, that's how you're working, and then eventually get better making music over the years. So Logic is really, really good. It's really recommended. It's costing 230, I think. Let me check really quick because actually my team made an entire chart, DAW comparison chart. So yeah, Logic is 229 euros, which is very inexpensive. Back in the days, I paid 2,500 for Logic 6 or 7, I think. So all of these prices came down a lot. The one huge, huge disadvantage of Logic is of course it only runs on Macs. So if you don't have a Mac, don't even think about it. If you're already in the Mac ecosystem, then Logic is probably your best bet because it's very versatile. You can make classic music with it, hip hop, pop, electronic music, everything. It's the least expensive if you consider what you get because it comes with a lot of additional plugins you would have otherwise to buy. They're all included. Apple is buying companies, including their synthesizers into Logic. So it's really, really a complete package with a lot of gigabytes of samples, sounds that you can use. You can even download additional content. So it's really, really huge. Again, the only drawback, it's on Mac. So you're basically, by buying a Mac, you pay more for the Mac and get the software for a little less. Next up is Ableton. Ableton is a little bit different because it has a different approach. It is really, really extremely good and the best out of all DAWs if you want to play your music live. So if you want to sit in the studio, make a track and then take it and perform it live on a stage, loop sections up and stuff like that, Ableton is the best by far. They're warping, morphing, time stretching, used to be the best. They were the first to make it really easy. Now all of the other DAWs copied the same functionality, so it doesn't matter really that much anymore. It comes in three bundles. It ranges between 80 euros for the standard version to 600 for the full version, depending on which kind of plugins and how much samples and plugins you actually use. Ableton is also heavily, heavily used by a lot of electronic dance music producers, because again, it has a less classic approach to music production 
in in the way you arrange and have these kind of clips it's more an approach of jamming to get to a result. But you can still do everything else that any other dog can do. Then we got Fruity Loops or FL Studio, which used to be like the cheap alternative back in the days. Cheap usually because you could get a cracked version very easily. That's why a lot of people that didn't, didn't have the budget started with FL Studio. The versions range from 90 to 290 euros and it's mostly used by electronic producers and urban producers. I don't even know a single serious pop producer that uses FL Studio. I don't know anyone that does film score with it. It's really not made for these type of scenarios. I personally never used it, so I can't really tell you about the workflow that much. But it has, again, a more classic DAW design as Logic, as Cubase, as Pro Seals, and all of these are others. I think Ableton is the one that is different and Reason. So let's maybe talk next about Reason. You can get the entrance version for 80 euros or the full suit for 550 euros. It's a different approach. It, it tries to mimic what a real studio, like the racks of a studio would look like. When I started out, again, it was my first DAW. I liked the design because it was this way kind of approachable, but back then at least trying to sidechain, like taking one signal, route it through another signal, you had to flip it and then like draw cables in there. That was a little bit annoying, so I personally at the moment don't know anyone that is just using it for production. Most people use it because they're used to it and rewire it to Ableton or Logic to do finer mixing decisions. So it's more like a creative tool. It's great for beginners to just jam around. But if you want to do serious stuff, yes, it's possible, but it's a little fiddly and like, I, I don't know, I couldn't go back to working with it, to be honest. Then next up, Cubase, available from 99 euros for like the very small package to 580 for the full thing with everything in it. It's very similar to Logic, it's just way more expensive. Similar amount of plugins, similar amount of integrated synthesizers, although Logic still has a little edge over, over Cubase. It's being used less and less. It's a little like a dated DAW. It's a little out of fashion. With the newest version, they're trying and they have a ton of very nice stuff in there, but it's not the hip DAW everyone is using at the moment. Most professional studios are running Macs and they have Logic installed. Most like bedroom beginner producers are more interested in Ableton and FL Studio. Then the last big one is Pro Tools. I see it less and less. It was the golden standard of every single studio and you still find it in every multi-million dollar studio. It's a must have, it's very expensive. Like the full HD version costs 2,300 something, which is just insane. It's the golden studio standard for recording. So whenever you have a recording studio, recording bands, like everything that has to do with recording a lot of tracks and editing them and comping them, then Pro Tools is like the most convenient, the standard was what most people use. For mixing it's also being used but it's not like the hip cool because it's just not affordable kind of DAW. And then we got like the the outsider kind of DAWs by hardcore fans. Some absolutely love them, others don't even know that they exist. Uh, we got for example Bitwig Studio, Digital Performer, Studio One, Reaper. They're all doing basically the same stuff. They're just not used that much. And that has like a slight disadvantage, something you should definitely consider when you pick your DAW. And that is like, we implemented in this chart, a tutorial rating. Cause when you start out your best and like a free source is definitely YouTube. And you will find a ton of stuff for Ableton. You will find a ton of stuff for Logic, FL Studio. But then like already Cubase and Reason less, Studio One, Pro Tools, and all the other ones even less. Keep that in mind because it's a huge factor. If you can learn a lot about your DAW, 
that's probably the most important to know how to use that tool. So all in all, if a friend would ask me which DAW should I pick, I would tell them if you're working with a Mac, get Logic. It's a no-brainer, don't even think about anything else. Get Logic, it's inexpensive, it works really, really good on a Mac, it performs really nicely, it's fully packed with a lot of samples, it's fully packed with synthesizers and like EQs, compressors, everything you want is in there. It's being upgraded already for five, six years without anything being charged. That's like insane. No one else does that. With the small problem that you pay a premium for the hardware. But if you already have a Mac Logic Pro, no brainer. Get it. For Windows, I'd personally go with Cubase because it's so similar to Logic. FL Studio is nice if you make hip hop and electronic music. Cubase is way more versatile and Ableton again, mostly again for electronic music, maybe a little bit of urban, but if you want to make film music, scores, classic stuff, then I think Cubase is like the most reasonable choice for Windows. We also like asked the entire community a couple of days ago about which DAW they're actually using. So we got a popularity rating, Ableton and Logic, both 25%. FL Studio 20% and then Pro Tools, Cubase, Studio One between 5 and 7.5% and then the rest doesn't even hit a percent. So yeah, again, Logic for Mac, Windows, Cubase if you want to have like this classic approach and do everything for electronic music, Ableton for FL, Urban and electronic music. I think that sums everything pretty much up. I mean, go get the demos, test them out for yourself. That's the best way to know how it looks like, how it works, how it behaves. Once you stick to a DAW, you will probably not switch. It's just too much hustle to relearn where everything is for just basically getting the same sound. And it's then all about the plugins that you implement into these DAWs. Again, they're just empty shells. You have to fill them and just, just learn how they work. Also, one last thing to consider if any of your friends is already producing music, then maybe just choose the DAW they're using so they can help you out. Because really, it's, it's about learning it and if you have someone in person to teach you, not right now at the moment, because we all have to like isolate and social distance, but hopefully soon back to normal. So yeah, if you're interested to download this chart, it will be linked down below, or I will just like, just screenshot it of this video. I hope this helps for you to make a choice. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer and why. I know there's always a huge debate. I again think it doesn't really matter. Any one of them can do basically anything. It's just you like using it in the right way. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I hope this helped. If you're interested in more DJ music production content, don't forget to like, subscribe. We'll see us tomorrow again here in the studio.